Hi there, my name's Kevin Parker. I'm the director of a company called KKI Associates. We work with inventors, with scientists and technologists, helping people commercialize their inventions. We have to help them answer the question, I've invented this, is it any use? I've invented this, does anyone want it? I'm gonna tell you a little story which helps me think through and helps people answer that question. I've invented this, does anyone want it? Can I commercialize it? It's a story that takes us back to the dawn of the semiconductor age and about the year 1950. The transistor, which is a small piece of silicon or germanium, which helps switching circuits operate more quickly, was invented by a man called Bill Shockley in 1950 at Bell Labs. The transistor replaced a thing called the thermionic valve. Any of you electric guitarists out there will know that we still have uh, uh, valve amplifiers. The valve is a thing about that size or bigger. It looks like a light bulb with lots of wires inside. What was good about the transistor? It was smaller, it was cheaper, and it used less electric current. What could you do with the transistor? Well, one obvious thing was to build a radio, and at least one company did build a radio. They built a radio with transistors in. They said to people, come and buy this radio. It's got transistors in. Didn't sell very many. Why was that? Well, the reason is <coughs> what radios were in those days. Radios were great big things because they had valves in. They plugged into the mains because they had valves in. They took up a lot of space in your front room because they had valves in. They warmed up the front room because they had valves in. And what a number of these companies, the unsuccessful companies did, was just to replicate that device, but with different insides. Buy our radio, it's got transistors in. It's quite easy to see with hindsight, that's not a very strong proposition. How did the transistor become commercially important? Well, it became important because another man a man in Japan called Akio Morita looked at this transistor and said to himself, it's interesting. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's cheaper, and it uses less current. If it uses less current, I don't need to connect it to the mains. I could run it off a battery. If I could run it off a battery and if I miniaturize all the other components, I could make a radio that doesn't need to be plugged into the mains. I could make a radio that could fit into my hand. I could make a radio that could be portable. I could make a radio that people could take with them around the house, that they could take outside, they could have music in the park. That man's name was Akio Morita. He went on and formed the company. He called the company Sony because he thought that sounded reasonably American. And it grew into one of the world's largest consumer electronics companies. And of course they've repeated the same trick over and over again. The Sony Walkman, the Sony Discman. Even the iPod is an extension of the same trick. Let's take something that's static, something that is locked into the mains and let's make it portable. And that little piece of creativity is the nub of making money from technology. Yes, there has to be a good invention. There has to be a piece of science that is difficult for anyone else to copy, but there needs to be a second piece of innovation. Innovation in terms of, can we do something different for our end users, for our customers? Can we answer the so what question? By this, it's got transistors in. So what? So what? Buy this and you get portable music. You can go outside. You can annoy your parents if you're a teenager by playing music too loud. You don't have to listen to a brass band concert. You don't have to have a wind-up gramophone. You don't have to play an instrument. You can get portable music all the time. Oh. That's cool. Yeah? And that's what we want. We want to be able to answer that so what question coherently and convincingly. And what we need to do is to think of what Mr. Morita did for Sony. 
which was to take an invention and do something useful and interesting and different with it for his customers. And that's the process of innovation. We don't just need invention, we need innovation as well.